Well, hey guys, it's Mike Festiva here. Welcome back to part five of the Mini Pinsgauer 6x6 build series. In the last video, we got this thing steering, so now we're gonna actually start working on some pedals. So here's some pedals I fabbed up. We'll get into this video here and uh, show you the process of building these things. We really wanna get the brakes worked out on here. The brakes were awful, didn't work on here, so it's a lot of re-engineering all this system, but I think it's gonna be pretty good. So enjoy the video, guys, and hopefully in the next part or two, we can actually drive this thing a little bit and test it out. All right, enjoy.
So if you're wondering why this thing has another hanger right here, I'm actually going to be double stacking another master cylinder right here with another reservoir. The reason is this thing actually has five calipers on this whole machine, and I don't think this cylinder would actually have enough volume for it, so that's why I'm doing a secondary one. Plus, we're doing a hydraulic parking brake on here, so realistically, this thing's going to have three independent hydraulic systems. So if you ever had a failure on one, you got two others as backups. Alright, got the second master cylinder on here. I'm really happy how that turned out. Right now I have to hold off on moving ahead on the brakes anymore because I have to order a bunch of special brake lines and some fittings. This Polaris here has more traditional brake fittings like you'd see on a car. And these master cylinders are more like something you see on a quad or motorcycle with banjo. Go into more detail later when we get those hoses. Right now we're going to jump over to the front struts here. I've already cut preload washers for them to preload the springs, but I always knew I was going to run an extra set of inboard shocks on here. So we're going to go over to the CNC and cut out all the shock hangers and stiffen everything up front here. All right, let's do that next.
All right, a little mid-project update. So I'm still waiting on some brake line fittings. They haven't showed up yet, so we have to jump over some other stuff. I ordered a more free-flowing air filter for this thing. It's actually gonna get mounted up here for now just to get this thing running. But over time, once I get the cab figured out and where the seats are, I'm gonna probably do some type of snorkel or something to mount it up over here. Mostly get it out of just a little bit of water and dust, things like that. Got a choke pole. We're gonna be hooking this on at some point, but we probably need to get more of the cab fitted out for that. Got a throttle cable, so that's gonna be nice so we can actually give it throttle once we get this thing up and running. Got more free-flowing jets to go with this air filter. And some of you guys have asked about the rear axle on this thing look a lot more narrow than the mid and front axle. That's because the mid and front axle have wheel spacers. I have not put the rear wheel spacers on here yet. The reason is I still have to do rear sprockets on this thing and they look like a nightmare. I'm not going to bring you guys along on that project because I just want to get it done. And you guys probably don't want to see it being put in there anyways. They look like a real pain. So I got to put those last three sprockets on there and two chains and hopefully get on to the next part of this build. All right, just got a new tool. It's a bead roller. I've never had a need for one of these tools in the past, but now we're doing the body work on here. I'm gonna start cutting out one of the floorboards for this thing, and it'd be cool to do some bead rolling just to strengthen it up a little bit. Tool I have is rated for 18 gauge. This is 16, but that's all I got. So let's start cutting out a floorboard here. All right, for a few of you guys that are interested in what kind of plasma torch I'm running, I'm running this little guy up here. It's a Titanium 45 from Harbor Freight. And I've had it for probably about a year and a half now and it's been super solid. I've had no problems with it. I've cut probably over 500 feet of metal with this thing and it's been solid. If anybody owns these things and they do have an issue where they cut and they only cut at 15 amps, even if they change out the tip, I can guarantee you it's the ground clamp. Either clean up the surface of the ground clamp or make sure it's actually grounded under your metal because the way these things are designed, they have a little ground lead going out to the tip for the pilot arc. And if uh, you got a bad ground here, it will only go to 15 amps to save the machines from burning up that little pilot arc ground. I can guarantee you, you just need to clip your work clamp on your metal and make sure it's ground down clean. Um, I think Langmuir says to clip it on the base of your water table on the drain. I don't like doing that. I like actually putting it right on my work. So like I said, 500 feet of metal or more with this thing and over the year and a half without any problems. Just this little plate you add up is about five feet of metal cut on this little plate alone and probably about 25 holes pierced. It's a great little thing. All right, let's get back to the build.
Well, all right, you guys, that's all we have time for in this video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. That new tool for 150 bucks or so for El Cheapo ring roller is awesome. It just makes all the difference. Instead of having this thin plate flexing around, it just gives it extra strength. Plus it gives it an extra style. Just looks way more manufactured. So hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, give it a thumbs up and leave a comment down below. Till next time guys, take care. Bye.